Hi everyone. Welcome to part 20 of A Revolution of Light and Love. A beautiful book of channel teachings from Jesus on how you can find joy, peace and love by living as your true self. And today's section is from a new part of the book called Joy. And it really is full of joy and joyful thoughts. And this section is called The Divine Has Only Infinite Love and Compassion. So let's just close our eyes for a moment. Just settle into the beautiful energy. Just taking some long, slow deep breaths in. Just breathing out all you want to let go of. Gently focusing on your heart. Breathing deeply into your heart. Letting your heart gently soften. Letting your heart gently open. Opening to the healing, love and compassion that is flowing into you right now. And just sitting in this love. And if you want. You can keep your eyes closed as you listen. The Divine has only infinite love and compassion. When the chance comes to reignite the flame in your soul, take it. Know that you can do this any time yourself. But when I send you helpers to remind you who you are, Seize this chance to change and grow into the true you. Stop letting fear and doubt stall you. Recognise my help when it comes, and it will come, and step into the glorious life you plan for yourself. You will know my helpers, for in their presence you will feel your heart burning with love. This may feel uncomfortable at first, as you are not used to feeling this love. But let yourself expand into it and you will quickly feel its beauty. And know that where my helpers are, I am. So ask me to help you. Choose to embrace this rather than choosing to cower in fear. Know it will only lead you to bliss. All I want for you is for you to become your true glorious selves, shining with light and love. So why step back from what I ask? Your feelings and your energy are intertwined, and one always mirrors the other. If you are feeling fearful or angry or doubtful, then your energy will depress. Likewise, if your energy is low, your mood will be low. But if you raise your energy through song or physical activity or meditation, then your mood will soar along with it. And if you follow your bliss, then your energy will also raise. 
This is why I always tell you to follow your joy and your bliss. This will raise your energy so you are more easily able to connect with me and feel my love. Joy leads to love. This is why you must live a life of joy so you can once again feel my love. You must stop believing that I have sent you here to live a life of misery and pain when I have sent you here for the exact opposite. I want you to soar to the heights of joy so we can soar together in love. I want you to spread this love to others, to all, so your world can soar. In this way, each soul in this earth will return to the divine and will return where their souls expanded. Through this love, your souls will expand. Through this love, you realise what it is to live a life at one with the light. Feel this light within you. Let your own light connect with it. Then from this tiny flicker, watch a great fire grow. Fire gives out warmth and heat, burns away the old, feeds you through its flames. So why fear the light and the fire of the divine within yourself? Embrace the fire. Let it heal you and warm you and feed your soul. I am the fire. I am the light. Drop your fear and walk through my flames unscathed. Know that you are also the light and the fire. And when we combine, the flames will be unstoppable. You carry me in your heart and in your soul. I wait for you to ignite one spark and then our work together in love can begin. There is only love and fear. Choose the love, choose the light. I am always here showing you the light. I never want to see you in the darkness. Never believe you have to be there. Walk out into the light. Have I not always told you to walk in the light? It is always up to you where you walk. If you feel lost, ask me to guide you. Only you can choose where you walk. Only you. Others may call you into the shadows, but you do not have to answer their call. You can always choose to stay on the path of light. It does not matter what you are doing and what, or what others are doing to you. Your reaction to it will decide whether you walk into the dark or stay in the light. You always think others have power over you, but it is always your choice how you react to events around you. Where do you choose to walk? You also think of the light as a weak force, whereas the light I mean will blast through the universe. And the more of you who walk in the light, the bigger this blast will be. Together we are creating an explosion of light and love that will eradicate the old and we can start to build anew. This is an exciting time. All the possibilities that once seemed impossible are now becoming possible as people return to their souls. This is a time of rapid expansion and growth. But this should also be a time of joy and bliss, never worry and stress. You must not strive to reach enlightenment, to reach higher. Instead you must let go and be this enlightenment within yourself. As my beloved astutely observed yesterday, gaining enlightenment is like writing poetry. If you are struggling and striving and trying hard and thinking until you feel your head will burst, then what you create will be lifeless and without joy. Whereas if you are in the moment and in the flow and letting the poetry pour from you, then the writing becomes a moment of bliss. This is what your growth should be like. A blissful, peaceful moment where you finally feel at one with yourself followed by another 
and another such moment. For so long you have felt out of place in your world, in your life, in your very body and mind. This is because you have been trying to fit into someone else's idea of where you should fit, instead of feeling into yourself, seeing who you truly are, and effortlessly stepping into the perfect place the Divine has always designed for you. Fitting in is a process of letting yourself be, and you will find that you will become totally and utterly yourself, perhaps for the first time in your life. When all else is stripped away, you will finally see the beauty of who you truly are, and you will see why my love for you, and why the Divine's love for you, is guaranteed. For how could we not love such glorious and loving beings? Remember this always. You are this glorious and loving being. No longer listen to the lies others have told you, and to the lies you have told yourself. No longer remain brainwashed by the ideas that you were taught as a child, but that no longer serve you. Think for yourself. See for yourself. Be yourself. The Divine has created a world of perfect beings. In your desire to fit in, you have twisted your perfect being out of shape. But you can always choose to straighten yourself out again, to gently unwind and find your perfect shape. All enlightenment is a gentle unfolding. It is a gradual awakening to your true self. It is nothing to be feared, as a gentle progression allows you time to get used to the new before you take the next step. I always want it to be so, that your very growth is a thing of beauty and a beautiful, joyful life. If you are not feeling the joy, you are not feeling me, and you are not feeling your true soul. This is why I always urge you to look for the joy, to follow the joy, as this will lead you back to yourself, and from there you can find me. I am writing these words to call you back to the Divine, from whose arms you have wrenched yourself. The Divine has only infinite love and compassion. There is nothing that the Divine cannot forgive. But the Divine does not even see that which needs forgiven. It sees only your unlimited potential and longs for you to reach this potential. It has created you in perfection and longs for you to fulfil this perfection. As I once did, so you too can do. Move beyond that which you have been taught. Think and feel for yourself again, and be who you truly are. So let's just take a little moment to close our eyes. To let those beautiful words sink into our hearts. To set down our old ideas. To feel the beautiful, glorious souls we really are bubbling up from our hearts yearning to walk in this world. Just asking yourself, are you ready to step out as your true soul self? Asking Jesus for help if you hesitate. just for a moment thinking how different your life will be when you live as this true soul self.
here's my thoughts on how you can live this and put it into practice. Sing your unique note. We've all heard of the idea of a choir of angels. We've just never dreamt we could be part of that choir. But when you tap into the unique gifts and talents you've had from birth and do what only you can do, you emit your own unique frequency out into the world. You sing your unique note. You start to notice others who are doing the same. You notice your note and their note sounding together in perfect harmony. Soon you start to feel part of this bigger choir, singing in symphony, to call something beautiful into existence. Then your life starts to sing. When you don't acknowledge and live from your uniqueness, when you don't sing your note, you strangle and silence yourself. Let the unique perfection within you lead your choices and decisions. Sing out. Be you. Be part of something bigger. You can't stop the music. Choose to be a conscious part of it. I think that's beautiful at this time in the world when the world is changing, changing and awakening and growing. To remember we're all part of something bigger. We all came here to be part of this beautiful change. And that all we have to do is sing out our unique note to be our unique vibration, our unique frequency, to let go of all our old ideas and let ourselves step out into that right now. And together we will continue to change the world. And we will bring into being the beautiful world we all dream of. So thank you for listening and until next week, take care.